Last on Everdark, Kaemorn is brought to Ravenscroft Manor, much to Balthazar's anger and dismay. Yet he immediately makes himself useful by teaching Christian how to control David. Will that endear him to anyone, though? Everdark, Episode 68 I am Iros. We need a house meeting, Balthazar said as he stared into Kaemorn's face. It was amazing how he still did, and oddly didn't hate this man. He hated what he'd done to Julian's parents. He hated what he'd gotten Heath and Selene, and perhaps Timothy into, and the grief he'd caused Elena. He used to hate Kaemorn for kicking him out of vampire society, and if he were honest, that had been when the greatest hatred had sprung from. But not anymore. He had his own house. He had made his own way. He had the friendship of the goddamn vampire king. Though he was very annoyed at that king at the moment. And finally, he knew who he really was. But Kaemorn, though he deserved to get the shit kicked out of him, and probably far worse, no longer could be blamed for what had happened to him. And in that moment, he trusted his gift in a way he had never fully done before. Not even when Damon had shown him what could be done with it against the Kallis. He stepped back from Kaemorn even as he swept his mind outwards and used his gift. He caught hold of the werewolves and Kaemorn's minds. They were now far more bound than they had been physically before. Arceus and William stepped back from the werewolves, who Balthazar allowed to get to their feet, but no farther. Kaemorn's eyes were fixed upon him. That calculating intelligence just radiated from him, yet the Kali vampire couldn't move a millimeter. Your powers have always been extraordinary, Kaemorn said. Balthazar felt Kaemorn push against the control he had, but Kaemorn could not move a muscle, and if he tried to use his gift, Balthazar would drop him like a rock. I thought when he called you Iros that he simply meant your bloodline, but, uh, <laughs> perhaps not. Christian was suddenly by his side, wrapping an arm around him. His fledgling silver eyes were huge. He could feel Christian's alarm that his true identity had been outed. He kissed his fledgling's head. He then glared at Damon. Cat out of the bag much, my king? And don't pretend you don't know that idiom. Calling me Iros and calling Fiona Wyvern? Though I notice no one cares or notices about her, Balthazar sent. It was time, Iros. I thought you understood that, Damon answered with a faint amount of amusement. I realize that I need to tell my people first. Telling the people in House Ravenscroft is only a start. Your people are all the Iros, Damon reminded him. Remember that. Balthazar's heart twisted with desire to have that kind of power and acceptance, but also nervousness. He had failed before at leading them as the immortal Iros. It had gotten him killed. Plus, he would have to be even more responsible if he took up the helm of all the Iros. You say the sweetest things. I never know whether to be nauseous or excited, Balthazar drawled. I wish my friend would be at my side and not pretending to be who he is not, Damon replied mildly. What we do next is a step that is large. You must be yourself when we do this together. As if bringing Kaemorn here and his fuzzy pets isn't a large step? This is nothing compared to what we do next, Damon said with another one of those mild smiles. What is Damon saying to you? Kaemorn looks like he's watching a tennis match, Christian asked. Kaemorn was frowning and his eyes had been ping-ponging between him and Damon. He knew they were communicating telepathically, but obviously he couldn't tell what they were saying. Damon wants to get into more trouble, like usual, Christian, Balthazar said. And he wants his favorite ally in crime at his side, I take it. Christian shook his head, not needing confirmation to know it was true. He likes to drag you with him into dangerous situations, while leaving Julian and I behind. Yes, and I agree with him on the latter part. Balthazar stroked his fledgling's back, which only got him a raised eyebrow in response. If Kali still exists, and Damon clearly exists, then why not Iros? Lizette murmured, breaking the silence that had fallen. Not Iros reborn, but Iros himself. Fiona went to Arceus's side then. Her gaze flickered around the room. 
She had heard, obviously, what Damon had called her, but she clearly didn't believe it. Like Camorn, she likely thought he had been calling her by her bloodline. Yet now both Camorn and Lazette were talking about immortals, and she looked a little shell-shocked. Without Balthazar confirming anything, she murmured, Are any of the immortals actually dead? Or did the Order lie about all that too? Well, religion has always been a lie in and of itself, to comfort, not to lead people toward the truth. It was Arceus, but not Camorn who looked guilt-stricken. But Arceus had always been a believer. It hurt to see. Balthazar was keenly aware now that William and Isabel had heard this news, not to mention the Cali vampires, though, ironically, they were the least likely to tell anyone. Knowledge was power, after all, but William, his beloved little William, leaked like a sieve, and with the wide-eyed look William was giving him now, he knew the information would be everywhere. Do not feel badly, Arceus. You only ever believed the good parts anyways. And there are a lot more good parts that you'll find out. Sophia assured him. You're very kind, Sophia. Arceus said with a weak smile. Balthazar scrubbed his face. Everything has turned upside down for all of us, my friend. Don't sweat this. I will feel much better after we rescue Seer from the spire. Arceus growled as he glared at Camorn. To think one of the immortals was in prison? How blind everyone has been when they know the truth. How many people do you think really believe in what the Order says? Camorn scoffed. The Order brings, well, <laughs> order. Religion is familiar to every vampire, everyone and everything in its place. With you at the top, Balthazar made a disgusted noise. You never believed in any of it. You and all those, except Arceus, used the Order as a hammer. And all of us were nails. The Council does nothing without your say. Can't we use that? Fiona's arms crossed over her chest. Can't we use him? Make him contact the Council? He'll tell them that he believes that Damon is our king and that he means us no harm and- What would the Council consider harm, Fiona? Lizette laughed softly. Them losing power, of course. They would definitely see Damon as the threat he truly is to them no matter what Camorn says. They'll just assume our great preceptor has thrown them under the bus so that he can retain power under Damon's leadership, which I am sure is what's going on here, or that Iris here has scrambled his brains. Either way, they will find some reason not to accept him. They are of no consequence, Damon said quietly. Balthazar immediately wondered if this was the bit of trouble that Damon wanted to get into, but immediately set that to the side. Going after the council. Until they had arranged their forces, that would be insane. What about Callie? Fiona asked. Can we not at least alert them to who Artemis Eleusius really is? Callie is no one's favorite immortal. Is that a personal opinion of yours, Wyvern? Camorn asked, his eyes narrowed. She started slightly, and Arceus put a hand on her shoulder. You know my name, Camorn. Use it. She snapped. I believe I am, Camon murmured. I just do not think that they will be more alarmed by the existence of Kali than of Damon or of Iros. His silver-eyed gaze slid to him. I think you're just jealous that you aren't the immortal, Camon. Lizette chuckled. You just get to be the direct fledgling of one, which will take your credibility with anyone who fears them down to negative numbers. Not that you were ever anyone's favorite either. So going to the council is out. Fiona shook her head as if she couldn't believe that some form of authority couldn't help them. There were never any true believers on it, Arceus said. So what use is came on to us? Fiona's nostrils flared. What does he bring to the table? He came here seeking asylum, but with nothing to add to our fight. Very good questions, but I am certain my fellow Callie has an answer to them, Lizette said. Even little Sophia said he would be useful. Yes, Fiona will get us into Solis, while Camorn will be able to unlock my mistress's cell. He will have other uses beyond this, but, but these are the most important at this time. Sophia said, You have foreseen this, because I have not been promised anything for my participation. Camorn said, You are lucky to still have your second life, Balthazar reminded him. Julian 
who had remained silently and tucked by Damon's side, said, You'll do it because you have no other choice. Camon's expression did not change, but Balthazar sensed the truth of those words in the preceptor's thoughts. Julian continued, That's why you came to King Damon. Because even though you knew you'd likely earned a second death from him, you absolutely knew that Callie was going to eliminate you. Camon still appeared unruffled even as his mind was whirling. That may be so, but I need some assurances that if I fully cooperate, that I will- You will serve, Damon said softly and ran his finger down Julian's cheek. Camon blinked and almost looked affronted. I need assurances. I am your king. Damon said that infuriating line that seemed to throw all of them into a state where they had no idea what to say. It was so implacable. Yes, of course, you are. And I did not mean to suggest that I was- There will be no assurances, Camon. There will be nothing but service from you. And at the end, we will see, Damon said without looking at him. This is your test and trial. You've survived so many. Perhaps you will survive this one. Camon's skin tone went paler than normal. Balthazar expected him to argue more, to press his case, but he surprisingly just inclined his head. Balthazar had allowed him to do that much. I know you probably want to get your mistress right now, Sophia, Balthazar said, but I need to get things, things settled here before we have another immortal in the house. We will take solace back, Damon said suddenly. He was stroking Julian's hair completely unperturbed about everything. Where, where what now? Balthazar blinked at the vampire king. He must have misunderstood. We will take solace, Damon repeated. When you say take, what do you mean by that exactly? Balthazar asked. It will be under my protection and care, Damon answered simply. Fiona let out a small sound. I believe, forgive me, King Damon, but solace is filled with confessors, most highly trained in those that are not. Well, they are high in number, and there are blood slaves. Not that you, I mean, I do not know what you think about- Do I approve of blood slaves? Each of you started as a human being. I value you. Every human has the potential to be one of you, Damon explained. So, no, Wyvern, I do not approve of blood slaves. None will be harmed. If you're listening on Spotify, Apple Podcast. Stitcher, or other dedicated listening platforms, and you want to say hi, head on over to the YouTube channel. We love to hear directly from you. Otherwise, we have no idea who's out there listening. It really means a lot. If you don't want to comment on specific episodes, we also run polls and discussions in our YouTube community tab all the time with deep topics such as, do you have pets? And what's your favorite vampire movie? Just search for Everdark YouTube or follow the link in the notes to connect with us. But everyone was exchanging looks in the room. They did not believe he was strong enough to stop the confessors from harming them, even if his people would not. You are very certain, Lisette said, her eyebrows rising. You think that I am arrogant and being quite overconfident in my powers. Damon actually laughed as he said this. I forget that none of you truly knows me yet. Even those that are my friends of old cannot remember. I assure you that I am not being overconfident. I am served more than just by my powers and my friends. Damon turned towards Camorn. The Everdark knows I have returned, does it not? Camorn blanched, as if those words had meaning to them, but he said, You are just one vampire. And no matter the power of your friends here, you do not have enough strength to take all of solace. A faint smile crossed Damon's lips. Balthazar fully expected him to say something about being king again, but he petted Julian instead. Will you use Armageddon? Does such a power exist? Camorn pressed. Damon said nothing to him. Instead, he spoke to Balthazar. I suppose you will want me to put on pants for this house meeting you wish to have. If you wouldn't mind, Balthazar answered dryly. You're definitely putting on pants, Julian scolded but gently. Balthazar hadn't noticed he had a pair of leather pants and boots under one arm. 
Camorn did sort of take up all of my attention. Balthazar gestured for William and Isabel to come to him. Both eagerly did. He was glad to see that neither of them seemed to regard him any differently. Their minds were whirring, but they still believed him their protector. Him being Iros just meant that he might be able to do a better job of that. He hoped that would be the case with the rest of his house. William, Isabel, I need you to make sure that Christian's parents are taken care of and not allowed near the main hall, he explained. After you do that, come yourselves. I will summon everyone. Both nodded. <laughs> You're nervous, Isabel noted with a nervous laugh. I've never been a very religious person, so I only had a passing understanding of the uneasiness people had with immortals. Balthazar licked his lips. Now I'm not sure how people will react. You know you could make us react however you like. William reminded him softly. And he could. He really could. He could tune every single one of their brains so that they would think it the best thing ever. And that would likely be a wise move. He needed cohesiveness. They were going to retake solace after all. He couldn't have anyone with less than 100% approval of him in the group. It would be foolish. But he found himself saying, I know, but I won't do that. Otherwise, I would be wrong. William smiled back broadly at him. You just proved that you aren't and never could be. You'll be all right, Balthazar. We left Vampire Society for you. We're behind you in this too. He gave them a brief nod, and both of them took off. Christian touched his hand. Those intelligent silver eyes looked up into his. They know who you are, Balthazar. It doesn't matter what your name is, Christian said. Balthazar cupped his face and gently kissed his forehead. Thank you. You don't believe me, Christian said, drawing back with a frown. Time will tell, Balthazar said. I guess I don't think that I would take it well, so I really don't know how I can expect anyone else to. But let's get this over with. Balthazar sent out a wave of command throughout the house. Everyone, excluding Elena, would be present when he made his announcement. He turned towards Damon, who was now thankfully dressed. Damon's naked body was distracting to most everyone. His red eyes were fixed on Balthazar's face. He was smiling again in that faint, irritating way. You look pleased with yourself now that you've completely upset the apple cart, Balthazar told him. It's the beginning, all of it. When Sir told me that I would have to win back all, I never truly appreciated how exciting it would be. Damon confessed. Exciting? Julian's eyebrows rose up as he shook his head. Damon kissed Julian's nearest temple. You find excitement in discovery. I find it in conquest. But you will see what it is like to see an empire fall and be retaken. Casting his voice low, though really with a bunch of vampires it was pointless. Are we really just going to waltz into solace and retake the place? Should I be telling my people to prepare for war? Damon's forehead furrowed. Why would we need their assistance, Cyrus? While Balthazar was staring at him, Fiona and Arceus joined them. She looked as disbelieving as Balthazar imagined that he did. Arceus still appeared disturbed by what he had learned about Seer. Past them, Camorn was still fixed in place by the wall. Sophia was talking to him and petting the werewolves on the head as if they were the kitties that she was demanding be brought to the house. Lizette and her group still sat on the couches like little birds on a line, but Balthazar was certain that they listened to every word. I'm going to ignore that you just suggested a suicide mission, Balthazar said to Damon. Well, I do assume that beyond Sophia, Wyvern, and Camorn, that a few of the vampires would like to accompany us, Damon said. Arsus? Yes, I am coming. Perhaps I can reach some of the confessors and we can avoid some bloodshed, Arsus said, coming back from whatever dark place his mind had taken him. There will only be as much bloodshed as there must be and no more, far less than either of you envision, Damon assured them. But how could his assurances ring anything but hollow? I would like to go to Solace as well. Lizette's voice rose up. Why, you don't care about those in Solace, Fiona said flatly. I wish to see our king in action. My witnessing will have value, she answered simply. Still wondering if you're on the right side? Sophia shook her head. She had come over from speaking to Camorn. Not in the least. I am truly on your side. I am just still 
Well, I need to see some things with my own eyes. Lizette smiled thinly. There will be much to see and report upon, Damon said with gentle equanimity. You are not peeved by her disbelief? Balthazar asked. Damon clasped his shoulder. It will be all the better when she does believe. I am certain she will be a convert, Balthazar responded dryly. It is time for you to tell people who you are now, Iros, Damon said. Balthazar had already heard the soft footfalls coming from every direction in the manor. His stomach did a flip. Christian held tightly onto his right hand. He felt his fledgling telling him that there was nothing to fear. Balthazar linked his hands with Christian's. He said to Camorn and the werewolves, Remain here. You will be allowed to move about this room, but no further. We will remain here with him, Balthazar, or I, Rose, Lizette said with a tilt of her head. And you needn't worry that any feelings I might have for a fellow Callie will affect me in the least. You are my friend. Camorn is, well, <laughs> you need not worry. Balthazar knew she was telling the truth. She was going to question him but she wasn't going to do anything that would harm him or his. He would learn everything she got out of Camorn in any event. Taking a deep breath, he merely inclined his head and turned towards the door out into the hallway. He gestured for Damon to precede him at the last moment. Not that Damon stood on ceremony, but perhaps he ought to in front of the others. Damon smiled at him and headed out into the hallway first with Julian in tow. Arceus actually smiled broadly at him the first genuine smile in some time. You have come around, haven't you? If we are going to our second deaths for our king, might as well let him go first out of the door, Balthazar said. And it allows you to avoid telling everyone your iros for a few minutes, Fiona muttered. Oh, and you'll be telling them that you're Wyvern, Fiona. Balthazar smiled acidly at her. She blinked. Clutching onto Christian's hand, he strode out of the room into the main hall. He heard in his ears as well as his head the excited murmurings from his house. They had no idea what he was going to say or do. Since Damon had joined them, the possibilities were endless. Christian rubbed his thumb along the back of Balthazar's hand comfortingly. I should be telling you that everything is going to be okay, Balthazar said to Christian. Christian merely shook his head. We're here for each other. Two-way street. He held up the diamond that contained David's soul. We need each other, and others too, even those we wish we didn't. But I do believe that things will work out for the best. At that moment, they entered the hall. It was filled to nearly overflowing. The fireplace was roaring and Balthazar made his way there. He reluctantly let go of Christian's hand and stepped up onto the thick stone base that jutted out from where the fire burned. The wood popped and crackled behind him remarkably loudly. All eyes were on him. They were like silver dollars glowing in the light. He clasped his hands together. He got welcoming looks and smiles. His house had no idea what he was going to say. Everyone, thank you for joining me here tonight. He gripped his hands so tightly together that his knuckles were white. As you know, we've had a lot of things happen recently. There was a scattering of laughter. He continued. I know that some of you, Perhaps many of you have been believers in the Order. This was not something I shared with you. I, I did not want to believe. Balthazar paused and cleared his throat that was suddenly tight with emotion. After what Rome did to us, I didn't want to believe in either immortal monsters or gods. He smiled wanly at Damon, who nodded and gave him courage to go on. The room was shocked that he would mention Rome but it felt right that he should do so. Rome was like a boil they needed to lance, and he was finally going to do it. That is why I am terrified to tell you something I've learned about myself, Balthazar said and grinned, but all he got back were worried looks. Damon is not the only immortal in our world. Eyes widened and breaths were held. I could tell you that what we know about the immortals other than Damon here is wrong, and that they were brilliant people who didn't deserve what happened to them. But I can't. Balthazar's voice dropped off. He cleared his throat again. I don't actually know what happened back then. The Order doesn't either, but I have learned some things that are true. The first 
is that King Damon not only exists, but is worthy of being king. Damon inclined his head, and there was a scattering of applause and cries of encouragement. But you are already learning that on your own, Balthazar said. That's not why I called this meeting. I... Words seemed to escape him. He couldn't say the words he needed to. Everyone was looking at him expectantly. William and Isabel had made their way up into the front of the room. Both of them looked at him with shining faces. Feeling a bit like Robert Downey Jr. at that moment, Balthazar abandoned any script he had. He stopped trying to speak and sent a single thought instead. Not just to his house, but to all of their bloodline. I am Iros. I have returned. Come, join me. Join us next time for episode 69, Iros Reborn. Buying something from our shop is a great way to support the Everdark podcast, as well as our future podcasts once Everdark is finished. Our designer has created some great Everdark merch, such as the Vampire Bloodlines hoodies, mugs, and journals done in a college-type design. Check out the link in the notes to our shop. This way you can support Everdark and wear your vampire bloodline with pride. The Everdark Podcast by X Aratare is performed by Edward Fox, Adam Riley, Jay Thillis, Bruno Devant, Kelly Michaels, and Hannah Hart, with Liz Gentle as Seer, edited by Matthew Prince, continuity by Adriel Wiggins. Everdark is produced by Wraith Rain Publishing in association with Her Grace Reed Studios. Copyright 2022 by Wraith Rain Publishing.